Kia ora, good evening. I'm Mary Joseph. I am a licensed immigration advisor with HIV Services coming live from Hamilton. Um, like you know, um, we for a lot of you viewers who come online regularly and watch this live stream know about us, uh, know what we do. We are a education and migration services company based out of Hamilton in New Zealand. And we are um, we promote uh, migration to New Zealand through various pathways. And we do these live sessions um, to basically connect with our existing students, our existing clients, because as a licensed immigration advisor, it is, it's difficult for us to stay in touch with every student that works with us. Hence, this is basically an opportunity for all our students to connect and speak to a licensed immigration advisor and get first-hand immigration advice free of course <laughs> yeah so that's that's the idea we do these live sessions every week um um before i get into uh, the main live session I'll, I'll go ahead with a couple of things number one sorry i felt something crawled up my leg so um the first thing is that um you know you are supposed to take advice only from an, a licensed immigration advisor authorized by immigration advisors authority uh, and by law we are supposed to state our license number here's my license card and my number is there uh, 20180150 you can go up on the IA website and check so um and that's that's how you verify whether you know the person providing immigration advice is a licensed advisor or not um, so that is very, very important. Please do not take advice from an unlicensed advisor or travel agent or whatever. And uh, secondly, um, uh, it is important also that, um, uh, you know, uh, industries do have a recognition, uh, sorry, uh, companies do have recognition from the industry professionals. For example, we are recognized by Education New Zealand um, and uh, we have a seal that we are a part of this group of ENZRA of a recognized agency from within India. And, uh, um, uh, you know, um, then um, that that is a recognition we have. We also have a very good visa conversion rate for pretty much across all categories of visas. Um, and that information is also publicly available on the immigration website. So before you make a choice of the agency that you work with, it's important for you verify and check what their credentials are. The other plus point now that I, I know that a lot of um, people are uh, staying home at the moment uh, due to the COVID situation, it is important that you work with an agency that has already uh, tried tested its model of uh, providing advice and support and services completely online. So we have tried and tested this model for over six years now, and uh, we are probably the only agency operating out of India and delivering services. Um, we have a team based in India uh, and our head office based in New Zealand. We've got team members also ac across the other countries, like we've got a licensed immigration advisor based out of Malaysia. And we have a team member based in Oman. So we are uh, we are located across the world, and we are able to provide seamless services to you no know, to everybody uh, planning to migrate to New Zealand, irrespective of the pathway. We have a well equipped team and an amazing process in place, a transparent process in place. So we have already you know excelled in that. And while everybody's still scrambling to understand how to get things done, we have, we are already there. So please do work with us uh, with confidence. And um, before uh, you know, as before uh, you know, normally it takes a while for us to get the questions. You know, comments come in. So what in the meanwhile, what we are doing is we are talking about uh, one particular school, one particular college. So today my team has assigned me to talk about North Tech Polytechnic. Um, so I'm just gonna. Um, quickly talk about that. So North Tech is a government polytechnic, okay, and they do have uh, various campuses across New Zealand. Their main campuses, however, are in Auckland, and uh, we've got uh, uh, four other smaller campuses, and the main one uh, outside Auckland will be uh, Kerikeri. And so they, they do have, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the other 
campuses in actually just give me a second they they the particular <laughs> smaller cities that are uh, available in so um so ma mainly this particular government polytechnic is owned and run by the government of new zealand okay so one thing about the polytechnics in new zealand are they all uh, approved by the government their programs are industry standard that's the most important thing that you will need to remember why a particular uh, um, you know school is uh, why why what the difference is between the school so you've got universities you've got government polytechnics and you've got private training establishments so the polytechnics are the ones that have uh, an understanding and an agreement with the government saying that okay we will give you employable workforce our courses will be more in tune to the industry so if you see that courses are very very practical in nature their fees is also relatively much lesser than studying at a university university fees start off at about 25 28000 upwards but studying at a government polytechnic your fees will be anywhere between 19000 to 20 21 22000 so um this northrec is based out of fangare um it is uh, based it is um uh, it's a city called fangare and they also have a main campus in auckland so this is because there are a lot of international students who would like to go to auckland so they do have a campus in auckland otherwise uh, the the role of northrec is to provide employable workforce to uh fangare region so they have courses across all levels they do have bachelors they have graduate diplomas and they have uh, masters degrees so they their uh, courses um specialize across various areas so it information systems they have business they have agriculture they have uh, you know they have a, a range of programs that are available and also we have seen so they they've also got uh, adult community education they've got business and business administration they've got diploma levels in uh, courses in civil engineering they do have um, construction program as well and they they also have smaller programs that are available across uh, certificate level programs where you know i know a lot of people are quite interested in those areas but it often uh, you know is not easy to get visas for those those courses so we don't really promote much of those programs but uh, yeah so uh, uh, north tech if you choose to study in north tech because and especially the campus outside auckland if you choose to study and start the course by uh, uh, the mo if you start study a graduate diploma program in north tech and you graduate by the end of uh, the year 2021 you will be eligible for a two year post study work visa because it's based out of auckland so that's a plus point about i know you might say okay uh, they don't have any higher level programs and how am i supposed to you know um uh get my 3 years post study work visa i'm just kind of quickly looking at uh, you know i'm just so they 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 only have courses at graduate diploma level and bachelor's levels so if you are keen to go to north tech but however because they don't have a post graduate degree you'll say okay i don't have a 3 year post study work visa so i prefer to do a post graduate instead if you're looking at moving into a new area you could always consider doing a bachelor's program with a cross credit that will be a the best opportunity because i know for a fact that a lot of people are shifting streams and when you're shifting streams or you've had a huge gap in your previous background the best way to deal with that situation is to do a program uh, a bachelor's degree again however with cross credit is where um, the the institution will assess to see what papers you've completed and give you credits so that you only have to do a year or year and a half of the bachelor's so you graduate out with two degrees because once you will have one degree from your home country and the other one from new zealand and you'll be better equipped to find a job plus you get a 3 years post study work visa so do when you when uh, all those watching this stream do talk to us about this pathway it is very very beneficial for people who are changing streams and people who are interested to do um an in depth program to do an industry project related program it will be good for you to do a bachelor's degree instead of doing a post graduate because post graduate means higher than what you have already studied and you might struggle uh to you might struggle to cope especially if you have a gap 
and you have not studied for a long time, it is good to have another bachelor's degree if you're apprehensive about doing a graduate diploma directly. Okay, so that's what it is. So that would be our uh, recommendation. So, um, so that's the, I'm done with North Sec. It's a very uh, limited number of programs they have. So I'm going to quickly move into the session. I think uh, there are a lot of people who have already started asking questions. Um, so some ground rules before we move ahead. Number one is uh, all AJV students start off with saying, hi, I'm an AJV student, whatever, and mention uh, your advisor's details and give me as much as information when you're asking your question. If, you, um, if you're not specifying who your advisor is, um, that's, that's okay, but as long as you clearly tell me whether you are an AJV student or not. Um, once uh, and and the people who are non AJV who have never worked with us before, please do give me your contact details. Without you giving me contact information, I'm I am sorry I won't be able to answer your question. Is because what happens is sometimes you know we need more information. Plus, my team needs to connect with you. You know, it's it's a two way uh, association or communication. You need to give me some information for us for me to provide you advice. So please provide us with your contact information so that we can follow up after this live session. So yes, yeah, so we'll start getting into the questions. I have my wonderful team who's joined uh, from across the world. Um, they've all joined in. And um, as usual, we've got some of our uh, regular viewers, some of our clients. Uh, great to see all of them. I hope all you people are well in your own bubbles. Um, so in New Zealand, we call one household as a bubble. Um, so, so that's that's the if don't don't uh, think it's something else, but yeah, um, we have got this. We use this term saying bubble is where you you are, you know, the people you are at close quarters with every day. So once uh, next week are uh, we are moving to level three of the lockdown of the alert level three. We, the lo lockdown is being lifted, and uh, we are moving to alert level three. So our bubbles are going to slightly expand. It will involve a few friends or neighbors or, you know, where we think that we can confine and, you know, um, stay regularly in touch. And people who are going back to work will also have their work bubble. Uh, however, we will continue to operate from, the, uh, from our home offices uh, in New Zealand as well, because uh, we are not still allowed to do face-to-face -face interaction, so there's no point of us being at the office. So we've decided to continue to work from the uh, from office because we efficiently do work from home as well. So we'll continue to work till uh, we move to a lot level two, where we are allowed to have more one-on-one -on -one interactions with people because even the retail stores are closed here. So uh, all you colleagues of uh, sorry our clients of ours if who are wondering whether we are going to be open soon no not really we'll have to wait for us to move to alert level two right so let's jump into questions enough of talking <coughs> let's start some uh, answering some questions right so all you lovely people who have already commented please go back and give add your phone numbers so that i can answer those questions okay uh Somebody says, uh, Airtel, somebody, Tigo Airtel says, okay. Tasin Ali says, total completely then. I don't know what he meant, means by that. It looks like it's a, he's missed a few words here and there. Shushil Podel says, hi. Hi, Shushil. Uh, Sandrev Bharat says, hello, ma'am. I'm Sanjeev um, from Mauritius. Can I do business here in your, there? Uh, Sandeep, thanks for your query. You have not given me a phone number. Could you please come back and, um, you know, edit and add your phone number or add another comment? I'll be able to come back and answer your question. Thank you. Gagandeep Singh uh, says, I want to move to New Zealand permanently as my sister lives in Auckland. That's great, uh, Gagan. You may send us an email. If you'd like, uh, you can send us an email to immigrationadvisor at ajvglobal.com. Uh, you can send us an email and we will be able to connect with you. If you're based out of India, you can directly connect our Indian team as well. Uh, it is info at ajvglobal.com or you can call us on our toll-free number. Uh, I'll say that number out so that you can make a note. So our toll-free number in India is 1-800-103-6525. It's 1-800-103. 1036525. So call us uh, on our toll free number. One of our advisors based in India will uh, answer the call and you can discuss your options with them. Um, 
Uh, and if you want me to elaborate a little bit more about how the pathways you I'd suggest you give us your contact details so that I can answer that for you. Thank you. Abdul Aleem says, Madam, how can you how can you suggest me how to visit to New Zealand? Abdul, please give us your contact details. I'll be able to answer that better, better for you. Thank you. Ganesh Bandi says, I want to apply for PR and have about 150 points. Can you please let me know what is the current points that is picked in the recent round? Uh, Ganesh, hi. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to... Um, you know, add your phone number. However, I'll still answer that for you because this is a very common question. If you have less than 160, please do not apply because you simply won't be selected. The current points criteria is 160 mandatory. So you won't be selected. Um, there are other thing, ways that you could possibly increase your points or other pathways. Please do share your details, Ganesh, so that we can connect with you and answer that for you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, next question. What might be the option after BBA, ma'am, if you want to enroll under a specific course rather than a general one? Because of finance and major, I couldn't enroll under supply chain, which I was interested. Um, this is Raju. Raju. Ta, okay, this is in Hindi. So my Hindi is a bit weak. It's uh, Raju Tag Tamang. Oh, yeah, not bad. Yeah, that's Raju Tamang. And he's um, wanting to study something in supply chain. Right. Uh, Raju, can you please come back and answer, um, um, you know, uh, sorry, give me your phone number so that I can answer that for you. Thank you. Okay, next question we've got Kriti Anand who says, can you please suggest when the borders will open for NZ? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure the Prime Minister also doesn't, okay, because at the moment is very, very uncertain. Uh, we are at this stage taking one day at a time, pro uh, checking how the progress with the COVID spread is. Um, and only after which uh, Kriti will be able to know. Uh, Jira, just stay, uh, stay tuned and um, wait and see what, uh, you know, how long it'll take. We, we can't be sure but I, but we have a feeling we kind of have a feeling it will be soon probably about in a month month and a half um with a lot of restrictions but uh we we are quite positive with the way new zealand and new zealanders have been dealing with the situation right now we are quite um positive uh and optimistic that it will reopen uh, the borders will be opened soon and the restriction will be lifted yeah okay um next uh, comment we have O'Neill, one of our very very lovely clients from wellington he says we are the ajv bubble on this live session absolutely and this bubble can be a big bubble because <laughs> it's contactless <laughs> yes of, of course O'Neill. thank you so much hope you guys are well okay next uh, comment we've got vinayak Vinayak Nilajkar says uh, it's a YouTube query because I'm, I'm coming live on YouTube as well. All those who are actually um, pasting your comments in YouTube and watching this, it'll be great if you can come to YouTube. With, uh, sorry, Facebook. It'll be much better for me to answer these questions here. Um, Vinayak says, um, hello, I'm an AJV student. My question is, in my AIP, INZ is not status stated for FTS, so please advise on managing my expenses initially. Is Indian currency and getting it exchanged the only option? Is carrying an Indian currency? Okay. Uh, Vinayak, thank you so much uh, for choosing uh, and opting to work with us. Um, yes, if you do not have FTS, you could do two or, two or three things. One is you can either carry a traveler's check, which you can bring in and once you open an account here in New Zealand, deposit Two is you can open an account while you're still in New Zealand, a non-FTS account. You can open a bank account with ANZ Bank. Our, my team will be able to assist you with that. So you open the bank account and transfer the funds before you arrive, okay? So that you come here and get it activated, get the account activated, and then start using those funds. Uh, best is not to carry any currency straight away. Uh, um, you know, uh, Indian currency, sorry. You could carry New Zealand dollars straight away. It is uh, it is often safe. I've traveled with New Zealand dollars quite often. So it's not a problem. 
or the other option is for you to uh, take an international uh, card you know those debit cards or where you can put the currency in i think icici and a couple of banks in india i assume you are from india so most countries do have this option where there is uh, it's not a it's i think it's called a traveler's card or some call it a foreign currency card depends on your bank so have a word if you're from india icici does have that option and the transaction fees quite minimal when compared to you know uh, uh, the transaction charges for uh, conversion of currency once you come here and things like that so i would suggest you to do these options my team will however be able to uh, assist you further on this have a word with them i'm sure uh, they'll help you best option is to open a bank account and get the money transferred even before you move to new zealand and that will be the best option for you to do at this stage okay thank you vinay can hope uh, to catch up with you once you come here because uh, we do go out and meet all our students myself arun or um, anjana who's our on shore support coordinator we have these lunches and dinners and uh, we have um, meetings people come into our office as well so it'll be great to catch up with you once you arrive thank you so much and look forward to seeing you soon thank you okay sujat ali asad says for student so asad i don't understand your question could you please um you know elaborate that and sanjeev that is sanjeev has uh, given his phone number thank you so much sanjeev i'll just go back okay so you're talking about business now um if you are looking at um a uh, setting up a business in new zealand there are one or two options available one is an entrepreneur category and the other one is an uh, an investor category so the kind of funds that is expected your profile that is uh, you know the kind of funds you want to invest and your profile based on which you will be advised which of these categories you'll be eligible for um and however it will all depend on money and your experience and your background that you know you have in the area of business if you already have an existing business it's easier that way because you're just you know you you it's easier for you to prove your intent so um my recommendation would be sanjeev is for you to send an email to info@ajvglobal.com however before that on youtube if you look for uh, investor visas or business visas on youtube for uh, under arun jacobs uh, videos or ajv global uh, look for uh, business how to set up a business in new zealand and um, there is good information about the prerequisites so arun explains because in in terms of uh, uh, the complexity the investor and business categories are very very complex and i as an advisor do not deal with that i'm one of the senior advisors here in the company and i do not deal with those categories it's only arun who does that because they are high value and quite complex in nature so uh, do have a look at that arun talks in detail about the eligibility of uh, you, you know the applicants if you think you fit the bill then send an email uh, or the other thing to do is you can go on our website and book a consultation directly with arun if you got any of you who are interested to um speak to uh, a, a, you know to a licensed advisor regarding business um the best option will be arun because he deals with those uh, visas so you guys can book a consultation on our website it it uh, it will it will be uh, you know it it will take you to a payment page where you can make the payment and send us an email and we will set up the consultation for you with our licensed immigration advisor and you can discuss so now this also is a facility available for everybody here because as i said there's only so much we can discuss on these live sessions so we do have an option on our website on ajvglobal.com if you look at uh, services uh, you will have all our uh, all we five advisors details are mentioned over there if you like to speak to any of these advisors you can book a consultation straight away from our website this gives you a one hour call a video skype you know whatever you're comfortable with skype or zoom zoom is the new thing that we have uh, that, that a lot of people are comfortable using so if you would like to have one of these any of those sessions we can set it up and you can have that one hour session one on one try and understand your profile discuss whatever your queries are and after that you you will get continued immigration advice till the time you're ready to make an application so this is only for advice this is it's just a consulting consulting fee and whenever you decide for a service you decide to apply 
for a particular application then obviously the service fee for that will be additional but it's good worth value for money if you speak to us because it's only difficult for us to talk to everybody and if you want attention from a licensed advisor and get uh, advice for your skilled migrant category or for even for study visas doesn't matter if you think you want to list here the information directly get the information directly from a licensed advisor please go on our website and book a consultation that's the best way uh, for you to speak to us and reach us yes yes there will be a fee but for all professional services in new zealand you have to pay a fee um that's how you get undivided attention yeah so please do uh, make use of that it's available on our website so sandeep if you do want to speak to us after looking at the video we'll be more than happy to discuss uh, you can speak to arun will be the best person for you to book a consultation with um uh, and also you can send us an email to info@ajvglobal.com for this right thanks so much okay next question we've got madan who says how are they calculating the score okay madan uh, again i don't have any background of what your question is i'm thinking you're talking about smc however could you please share your contact details and if you would like to be assessed uh please send us an email to info@ajvglobal.com or you could book a consultation consultation from our website that's another way to get through to us quickly um next question we've got mark danford who says hi trust you well if you've already applied prior to lockdown for a work to residence visa when would you expect a response following the employees need to get staff on board for companies allowed to work at alert level 3 that's a good question mark um hi i don't see you've shared the contact details but i'll still answer that for you um at the stage immigration new zealand is very clearly stated the list of applications that are on priority they have not mentioned any work categories yet in that it's only partnership based and student full fee paying student visas um so at this stage they have not really spoken about work visas for non essential workers so we will we will just need to wait and see because i'm sure immigration new zealand will work on another circular uh, uh, next week and we will know more about this so um stay tuned on our website and i'm sure you will get uh, on our facebook page and i'm sure you'll get the updates on that once as and when it's been announced yeah thank you next comment we have inox walk who says hello what opportunities does africa have in new zealand okay interesting question uh inox please share your number uh, so that we can answer that further for you and if you can elaborate a little bit i i guess you meant african and not africa so if you can just elaborate your question that would be great i'll be able to answer and give me a bit of a background or, or as well of your profile so that i can answer that um properly um rashadul rashid uh, says nz how um nz how to cost totally sorry your question again i'm not very sure if you could please answer that uh, elaborate that question and share your phone number that will be great thank you swapnil khadekar says hi ma'am uh, for hospitality level is the best to study i'm already graduated swapnil can you please share your phone number so that i can answer that question for you thank you raju thank you for sharing your number um and he further says i was already in touch with one of your agent as per her general courses might be the only option applied management but per my understanding even arun sir was also not much fond of it do i have any other option at all okay i'll tell you something you need to understand what happens see if you want to only do a course uh, uh, raju fine if you want to study and take your degree and go back home you can study the specific course that you want okay but if you are looking at a career in new zealand you will need to widen your scope now getting if you want to basically uh, if you want to do a course in supply chain please understand that you should have strong profile already in the other areas of business because for supply chain if you you need it's very tough to progress into a resident visa with a supply chain job okay so there are only two levels of roles over there either you are a procurement uh, at a lower level a low skill level where you need to have a salary of 80000 dollars which is highly un uh, unlikely you will get at that level because it's a very low level um uh, you know it's it's like an entry level job and you won't be, may not be paid as much 
the next is getting a procurement manager role for that you will need to work for a couple of years at least about 6 7 years to be a 6 7 or even more to be able to get that kind of salary because procurement manager start off at about $80000 upwards so you are stuck either at an entry level low role which is at a lower level which qualifying for resident visa is very very difficult or you are at a very very high level where you'll have to wait for many years eventually to qualify so this is where you will be stuck what happens if you because i'm telling you this is already happening with some of our clients where there is someone who's worked uh, who's done a masters at, for, of supply chain from mcu university she got in as a, as, a, as as an entry level logistics uh, personal and it's been 3 years she's working there so she's she's struggling qualify for a resident visa because her salary is not going up you need to have 80000 dollars or higher to qualify for a resident visa for, for a lower level a uh, job uh, or you have to have you have to be a manager and have a salary which will be and have many years of experience so you will be stuck for about 6 or 7 years eventually to qualify for resident visa right that's a long uh, pathway so just to ensure that you you have more opportunities you have to do a generic course you have to understand that so raju you why don't you speak to one of our advisors they will clarify this further to you because um i know you a lot of people are talking about supply chain programs but we are knowing the real time problems over here for people who come under these uh, roles so please please be careful like you know they say there's a myth in the market saying oh if you do a business course you have to be a manager well it is partially true but not entirely so in within the area of business also there are some roles where you have to be a manager for example customer service you have to be a manager sales you have to be a manager supply chain you have to be a manager and to get a role in as a manager level you need a lot of experience so you are going to be stuck but there are other roles like uh, say in um, uh, ict sales in uh, marketing and uh, communications and advertising you don't have to be uh, at uh, um, at uh, accounts you don't have to be a manager for these roles so it depends on your role it's not generic for all business roles okay so that's that's important to understand raju so please do have a word with one of my team members and they'll explain it even further for you thank you so much um rishadul where is our office we are based out of hamilton and we do have a lot of uh, officers across um, uh, india so please do share your details so that we can give more information thank you kriti anand says thanks for replying also i had a question that colleges that are there sessions from july do you think these sessions will be postponed as reaching for july seems a bit more difficult okay kriti i'm not sure if you are an ajv student um, and you're asking me these questions um out of courtesy answer the first ones i think uh, you'll have to give me a little more information or your contact details i'd say you need to share your contact information more than likely i think you've already started the process but it will be good for you to check out who we are and how we deal with things have a word with us share your number uh, and then i'll answer further for you thank you chirag kohli says can i get a work permit for visa for 3 years um chirag we need your phone number so that i can answer that sorry um uh, pradya sagar singh says how can i get a job in new zealand vidya sagar please give me your contact details so that i can answer thank you uh sujat ali asad says um this is my id please send me details i don't know what information you need i'm sorry please specify that um nirosh amar singhe hi nirosh how are you hope you're well okay um nirosh says is there any support by government for students in these alert level student subsidiary or something well it is available for people who are already working nirosh and not for people who have uh, you know who are not working unfortunately uh, there's only so much that um, you know um, see there is that there, there are you know there are a lot of support systems available in place uh, uh, what i would recommend you to do is is um, have a word with us why don't you pick up the phone and speak to us if you're feeling down and stuff like that at the moment i i they have not announced anything for international students per se uh but um yeah so 
there is support provided there is wage subsidy for people who are already employed okay so not for uh, international students unfortunately at this stage yeah uh, Lawrence Ritchie says, is there nursing helper courses available for Indian students? I have IELTS of seven. What is the duration of study? Lawrence, it's a very good and important question. Please do share your contact details so that I can answer that question for you. Um, Swapnil Khadekar says, my question is, which level is best for study in hospitality? Thank you for sharing your number, Swapnil. Um, Swapnil, it really depends on what course uh, uh you know what would you like to study within hospitality see if you you can do a graduate diploma level as well you've already finished your bachelor's so the next best option to do a graduate diploma level seven however if you do a graduate diploma you will be eligible only for two years or one year post-study work visa depending on when you visa then it's best to do a postgraduate diploma which is basically the first year of master's um yes there are there are some specialized pg diplomas which also have internships in them so so when my team connects with you, ask them about that. Team, please do talk to Swapnil about the PG diploma from uh, PIHMS, which basically offers paid internships. Um, and it's an amazing program. The outcomes are very, very good. So do have a chat with my team about the PG diploma at PIHMS, which is a new Plymouth Swapnil. Uh, I'm sure my team will be able to assist further on that. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Suresh says, is there any chance for July intake to be postponed to some other intake like this year? Okay, I am sorry, uh, Suresh, I'm unable to answer that, uh, but my one of my team members has the, given a thumbs up to your query, so I think you're in touch with Mariam. I will answer that for you. So the July intake, at this stage, none of the schools have discussed about postponing. We'll have to just proceed and see how it works. Okay, thank you. Uh, Raju says, much clarified. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Next question, we've got Patrick Lumuba Williams, who says, living in uh, Syria, uh, Sierra, uh, Sierra, sorry, Sierra Loan, West Africa. Uh, there is no embassy for New Zealand. How will I start the process? Patrick, can you please share your details? It'll be great so that we can answer that for you. Um, Kriti Anand says, I am not an EJV student yet and my contact details. Thank you, Kriti. I will go back and answer your question. Thanks for sharing your number. Uh, so you say that, okay, July at the moment, there is nothing uh, that we are putting on hold. There's a huge possibility, as I said, Kriti, is there's a good possibility that July will happen purely because of the way New Zealand has uh, is working on controlling uh, the COVID situation. We are very, very hopeful and, and optimistic that, you know, July, by the time July intake comes in, it will, uh, the the borders, uh, border restriction will be lifted. However, apply, applying is the best thing to do. Applying and staying in the queue while, you know, things are getting sorted it is the best option right now. That's our recommendation, uh, Kriti. Please go ahead and start the process with us. Thank you. Uh, Vidya Sagar Singh. <laughs> so, so he says you don't pay enough attention on my question Vidya Sagar I'm sorry I haven't even seen your question yeah let me scroll back and see that okay Vidya Sagar you have not shared your contact details I, that is the reason I have not shared because that's the rule of the session I've I've said that when I started the the started the session is you will need to share your uh, details so um, you do understand that you are talking to a professional, uh, a licensed immigration advisor. So before I give some information, I also expect you to give me some more information about you and most importantly, your contact information. I'm sorry, um, there's you. that's the rules of the session and we have kept it that way. If you see a lot of them have given their numbers. So yeah, we are not some haunting, daunting uh, telecallers who will sit on your heads, you know, after you give us your details. If you want some information, please do share your number. I would I would request or recommend you to do that. Thank you. Okay. Mm, next comment we've got uh, Suresh. Suresh says, hi, I'm an AJV student and wish to know if the July intake will be postponed. I just mentioned, Suresh, that um, at the moment we don't foresee that. But, well, we don't know if, if the situation does not come under control. There is a possibility it will be postponed. Um, as, a, as I would not be able to move out for medicals and documentation. So 
um, if you're working with us, Immigration New Zealand has given us an allowance to be able to file with without the medicals at this stage. So do uh, speak to your advisor and your advisor will help you on this information. Thank you. Uh, Swapnil says, thank you so much. You mean level eight will be great to study. Yes, level eight is the PG diploma. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Kriti Anand says, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Suresh says, thanks and thumbs up. You're welcome. Lawrence Ritchie says, uh, Richard Lawrence looking for medical helper course. Right. Um, Lawrence, um, uh, so I think you're talking about a healthcare assistant program, right? So now the healthcare assistant programs are online programs. They, we don't have uh, full-time health programs available. However, you could do programs in community health and support, which will be assessed directly for a level four of the community health uh, support. So um, what I would suggest is my team will connect with you. We will understand what your profile is and then suggest what will be the best option for you, okay? Because there are a lot of programs who which are related to health. If you study directly, you can get that assessed uh, equivalent to a level four of a healthcare assistant. So... Uh, you you if it, it's not if it's not eligible then you can do the online programs available over here which takes about one or one and a half or two years depending on what level you are already at but uh, as far as I know somebody who's done a level seven in um, community health and support should be able to get in and assessed as a level four already and go straight away into work as a healthcare assistant so do speak to my team members they'll be able to help you on this okay thank you Next question. Okay, we're at the last 10 minutes of the session, guys. Um, anyone who's just, you know, waiting for the right time to ask questions, now it is the right time because we're about to close the session in about precisely nine minutes. Um, please do uh, share um, and so that I can answer that uh, promptly. Okay, thank you. Patrick says uh, he's come back and given me his number. Thank you so much, Patrick. And uh, Patrick, um, one of my team members will connect with you. Um, thanks for sharing your number because we like to see what your profile is and what you're eligible for because um, most of the African applications, you know, it is quite uh, a challenging uh, market. So we, we are taking it on a case-to-case -case basis to understand what you will be eligible for and what your profile is. So one of my team members will connect with you and discuss this in detail with you, Patrick. Thank you very much. Okay. Ravish Shetty says, um, hello, I'm not an AJVN yet. I need information about supply chain course in TOI. Ravish, can you please share your contact details so that I can come back? Thank you. You have shared that as well. Thank you so much, Ravish. Yeah. So supply chain. Okay. Now I need to understand what your background is, Ravish, because if you have many years of experience in supply chain and logistics and procurement, then doing a supply chain program will be, will be the best option. Um, can you please give me a little bit information about your profile? I need to know whether you have many years of experience or you are a fresher because it is going to be very, very difficult as a fresher to find a job in New Zealand. The course is amazing. Uh, however, finding a job as a procurement manager will be very, very challenging or finding a job as a procurement officer with 80,000 salary to meet the threshold for uh, a resident visa also is equally challenging. So have a word with um, with one of our advisors. Thank you for sharing your details. My advisor will explain to you why you should not be doing only a pure supply chain program or you could do it as a backup. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, the next comment we have is Sasya Krishna Kumar Shetty. Um, Krishna, can you please give your number so that I can come back and answer that for you? Thank you. Okay, Nirosh, one of our very, very sweet students, again, come back and shared uh, his um, experience with us. He says, AJB is trustworthy. Just wanted to share my thoughts here. I'm not disappointed working with you by experience to be considered as to studies in a university. We have to be physically available in the uni for a certain duration, like six months or so, and I'm not mistaken. But if the lectures are going online, will it be a concern when applying for a work permit or later on? No. Nirosh, don't worry about that, absolutely, because um, Education New Zealand is closely working with immigration and they understand these things, you know. They understand this situation, so there won't be any problem. Uh, 
don't worry about it it is um they are going to give a lot of support uh, i'm sure you are aware that a lot of visas were straight away extended without any questions asked um that's that's how the country is responding promptly to the current situation and they will consider this aspect that you you know that that you couldn't attend the classes in person and it's not just you there's so many others as well so yes don't worry i'm sure it will be handled properly and you you will be considered for a work visa no problem um krishna thanks so much for coming back and giving me your number he says hi completed pgdbm pgdbm in india can i have some opportunities in new zealand um sasha applying for jobs directly from overseas is quite challenging to new zealand and with in to new zealand purely because the employers uh, find it hard to verify and hire people from overseas directly because there are also visa challenges um like for example because you are from management pgdb i understand it could be in management so people in the area that are not in the long term skill shortage list immigration new zealand requires proof that sorry the employer has done enough of efforts to hire new zealanders before offering that role to an applicant uh, who is based overseas or a migrant in that it becomes very very challenging for them to go through that entire process hence they prefer to hire somebody who's here in the country with a valid visa hence the student pathway is very very good because you finish your course and you do get that three years work visa or two years depending on the course that you do which allows you to go to an employer and say hey you know what don't worry about the visa i already have my visa all you need to do is give me a job and give me an opportunity to work so that is ticked off uh, uh, krishna so um one, when my team does connect with you please do have a word with them and discuss your opportunities right thank you uh raj raj and raj says hi i'm in the cement industry as control room operator any opportunities uh raja i just informed about job opportunities it's going to be very difficult or nearly impossible for you to get a job while you're overseas uh because of the challenges employers face for verification and visas hence coming to the country and being able to have a work visa is very very important and hence the student pathway is the best and stable pathway available for pretty much everybody right away if you however uh, even for uh, krishna uh, however if you do have some years of experience we could assess to see if you do qualify for a resident visa um under the job search category but that also is very very difficult and it takes nearly 18 months to get through the entire process hence the easiest and the quickest way for you to look i won't say easy but i'll say it's a simpler way of getting into new zealand and looking for opportunities is through a student pathway So when my team does connect with you guys, please have a word and explore the opportunity. Have a no obligation chat with us and see how it works. If well, if it suits you and suits your budget and your situation, go ahead with it. Or you can always tell us frankly, saying that you know you do not have the uh, ability to be able to sponsor or study, and then we will we will not haunt you. We are not. we are not like some you know telecallers who will ensure that you keep oh, you know talking to us till the time. Um, you sign up now we are not selling some some cards or credit cards we are selling futures to you guys in new zealand so uh, it's important that it meets your requirement so a lot of people do keep telling us saying oh why do you guys always you know uh, suggest student option it's it's not because we we fancy that it's uh, you know uh, in terms of the money that the company will make in respect of the pathway you know it's it's all the same for us it is about what suits you as your profile because for us yes we are a business we will make money eventually however for us what your outcome is and what your goal is is a priority for us so if for example if somebody comes straight away and talk to us and says i want to study we still spend the time and see whether you, they do qualify for other pathways is because tomorrow we don't want you to come to new zealand and realize you might you could have got another pathway into the country and you you spent away too much money so we are very very cautious and careful about that that is the reason we are licensed we we understand all the pathways available and we take care to offer you all the pathways available giving you the pros and cons so that you can eventually decide so we do have a lot of experienced people who also come to us who could possibly apply for uh, you know a skilled migrant category job search visa but th- we do tell them the facts and they take an informed decision uh, as to what 
pathway to eventually select. So yes, when you speak to us, when you do connect with us, we will ensure that we give you options across uh, across the banner and not just just one option or always. Yeah, so that's how it is. Um, Chetan Rajput has given some comments, but there's no number. Sorry, I can't answer that for you. Benson, um, Benson, hi. Thanks for your query, but uh, I'd like you to please share your uh, contact details so that I can answer that question for you. Thank you. Um, Ravish has come back and added a few more points. He says he's undergraduate, five years experience in sales, two years in logistics as an operations executive fleet management and part of the job hence wanted to review okay Ravish that is fairly very less of an experience to expect uh, so if you come in you may find a job because of your experience you may be able to find a job as a purchase officer but as a purchase officer you'll get a salary of which is a low skilled level a purchasing officer is a low skill level or a supply chain officer is a lower skill level so you will you may get a salary of 45 fifty thousand dollars that means you won't qualify for a resident visa till your salary goes up higher at about 36 dollars an hour or you become a manager to become a manager it will take at least about five or six years so you will need to understand what challenges you will be facing because you've got a background in sales, I would suggest you to look at probably something in sales and marketing as a course or do a generic applied management program, opening you up to opportunities. So because you have your experience in supply chain, you still may be able to get a job in supply chain to keep things floating. Okay, But you need to create back backup. You may not be able to land into uh, you know or qualify for a resident visa easily with a job in supply chain so it's quite challenging and this this is something that we are facing already with us our clients hence i feel it's important that i discuss this and tell you all that before taking a course purely in supply chain please think twice where you want to see your career ahead okay and what is your goal in new zealand it's very very important to understand the pathway available right thank you very much ravish and discuss with my team and i'm sure they'll be able to help you further on this thank you Okay, uh, the last comment, we've got Abdul Ibrahim, but he has not given us his phone number. However, Abdul, I recommend you send us an email to immigrationadvice at ajvglobal.com. Uh, um, one of my team members or myself will respond to you on your query. Yeah? Send us your CV and we'll see how you qualify us so that I can you know, talk to you personally on a Zoom chat or Skype chat and you know, sort it out. Right, before I wrap up, let me quickly check if there are any questions. Uh, okay. Mm. Okay, there was one person called Pankaj Vats who had commented uh, with his number also. Thank you so much, Pankaj. So I can answer that for you quickly. Opportunities are good uh, for sales and marketing. Yes, the good opportunities in that area, Pankaj. However, the problem will remain of you unable to find a job while you're still overseas. So please do speak with our, uh, speak to our team and they'll be able to help you. Yeah um right and i think that's a lot of comments from nirosh on youtube but i think my team has um consolidated it thank you nirosh pick up the phone and talk to us man <laughs> we are on the toll free number 0800 pick up the phone and speak to me it, it the the call comes straight to me so um i'll i'll be able to answer that for you okay abdul ibrahim uh, has given his number thank you abdul um however I see it's about assessment for, um, you know, resident visa. So best is you send us an email to immigrationadvisor at ajvglobal.com. Send me your CV and of your spouse. We'll assess and come back to you. The easier option will be for you and book a consultation so that I can discuss this further. Right. Thank you very much for your time, guys. It was an amazing session. I think there were quite a few comments today and a lot of new people who have come in. Thank you so much, all AJV clients. Thanks for working with us. And uh, everybody stay home, save the world, stay home and save your families as well. And, um, and you know, stay safe in all New Zealand, all those based in New Zealand, stay safe in your bubbles. I'll be happy to ch have a chat with any of you. Thank you so much. And um, have a good night. It's already pretty late here in New Zealand. 
and it's getting cold uh, we hope you you guys stay safe as well thank you good night kakiteano